What's up everybody? Crypto Noah back with another fire yield farming video. In this video, we're going to be talking about what chain should I yield farm on, right? You have all these layer ones and layer twos and all these decentralized exchanges, all these tokens. So sometimes it can be hard like, man, what chain should I yield farm on? We're going to talk about all that. We're going to break down what yield farming is, and I'm going to give you all my thoughts around this subject. So before we get started, I do have to say none of this is financial advice. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decisions. These are my own perspectives, research, and opinions, and they should be treated as such. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the video, starting off with what is yield farming. So it's four ways to get a yield in crypto. You have staking. You can stake your ETH on the ETH 2.0 beacon chain and get like a 13% APY to help secure the network. You can stake your funds on borrowing and lending platforms such as Aave, and get a yield in exchange for the platform to loan out your tokens. You can stake your tokens on an insurance platform such as Nexus Mutual, or the most profitable way, the way we're gonna be talking about in this video and the way we always talk about on this channel is provide liquidity on decentralized exchanges in the form of pairs. You put your pairs in these liquidity pools and anytime people trade back and forth within the pool, you make passive income in proportion to how much your liquidity makes up in the pool. So if it's 100K in the pool and you have 10K in liquidity, you're getting 10% of the trading fees. So now that we know what yield farming is, what chain should I provide liquidity on? So the first thing you want to start with, you don't want to start with the chain. Well, the only time you'll want to start with the chain is if like, let's say the chain is offering some kind of incentives, right? So when Arbitrum launched this token, they saved some tokens to increase liquidity on the platform. So you could have provided liquidity on, let's say ETH USDC and got paid in Arbitrum tokens. And you just got Arbitrum for free in addition to the trading fees that you're getting. So that's the one instance when you want to start with the chain, right? The first thing you want to start with is the asset, aka token or pair you would like to accumulate or provide liquidity for. So after that, then you go and find what chain is offering the highest volume to TVO ratio where you can make the most money. And this thing will change a lot, so you kinda wanna be able to try to predict where you think the liquidity will go. I'll give you an example. Let's say I wanna accumulate Pendle Finance, right? And if you go to CoinGecko and you click these three dots, you can see that Pendle is on four different chains, right? So now what you want to do is if you don't have a lot of capital and you're providing liquidity within a fairly tight range, you're not going to, it's on five different chains, actually, ETH as well. You're not going to want to go where the gas fees are really high because it'll eat into your profits, right? So that is one way to eliminate it. But if you have a wide range, ETH is back in the question because if you're not rebalancing too frequently, depending on how much capital you have, you can make your gas fee back in a day, right? So after that, then you can go over to Uniswap, hit top pools, and then you go here, and then you can see some of the data. So you can see on ETH, TVL is 3 million, seven day volume is 11 million. So that's really good. One day APR is 7.3%, but you don't really wanna look at that because your APR is gonna be dependent upon your range. I'm not sure how they go about guessing that. But you basically input this on all the chains. You hit this here, you do the same thing for Arbitrum, you do the same thing for Optimism or wherever your asset is at. And then you go to a platform such as Metrics Finance and then you can backtest it. And when you backtest, if you think price is gonna trade between the same range as it was in the past, this is the best time to backtest. But if you think Pendle's gonna outperform ETH and the price is gonna go up, backtesting isn't as important because you know that it's going to go out of range eventually. So the past range doesn't really matter as much. But you go here, you click, you type in Pendle, you click the fee tier, and you simulate. After that, assuming you're doing concentrated liquidity, which I recommend you should, you input your range. So let's say this is your range. You input this, you put the bottom number here, the top number here, and you select how many days you want to back test. And it'll give you what your APY or your APR APY is factors in compounding, APR just factors in what you're being paid. It'll give you your APR and you can do this on all of the chains. And then you can make your decision after that. And again, this is gonna be different from, from each asset you're gonna LP. If you're doing ETH USDC and you wanna provide liquidity within the tight range, like I said in the beginning of the video, you're probably not wanna, gonna to wanna to be on ETH mainnet unless you have a lot of capital because you will always wanna be making your gas fees. You don't wanna get into a pool, spend gas, have to rebalance before you make your gas back. Right, so if you do an ETH USDC in a wide range, you can look at all chains. But there's certain things that will allow you to eliminate 
certain chains. If the volume to TVL ratio is low, if your strategy is in a tight range, you don't want to be on the chain with high gas fees, etc, etc. So, now that we're at the end of the video, before I conclude, guys, if you like this kind of content and you want to learn how to do this professionally with an elite group of coaches and members, get access to buy and sell calls, weekly calls, etc, etc, click the link in the description, book a free strategy session, you'll talk to me or one of our coaches. We'll see if this program is a good fit for you, and if it's not, at the very least, we're happy to answer any questions you may have on yield farming and crypto and point you in the right direction. But with that, I thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you got value, consider subscribing, drop a like, drop a comment. I love every single one of you who's watching right now, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and trade safe.